Uh, so before I jump into unfolding my box uh, for the creation of a cereal box, I'm going to go ahead and create and set a project. If you haven't created and set a project, when you send either UV snapshots and try to adjust those, or if you work in Photoshop networks, uh, they may save to a weird location. And depending on whether you're on a Mac, a PC, or Linux will depend on the location where the, the default uh, projects are saved. Uh, so just to spare myself trying to find the files, I'm going to go ahead and just create a new project. So to create a new project, I'm just going to go to File, Project Window. When the project window opens, now I could go through and delete certain aspects, uh, but I'm not going to worry about it. Even though I'm never going to use uh, the clips right now or the data or the movies or the autosave, I'm not going to use any of these folders right away. Uh, I'm going to keep them there just as good practice. So I'm going to go ahead and give myself a new file. I'm going to call this one Brown Roger. And uh, this will be part of a bigger project. So I'm just going to call this the Serial Commercial. And uh, I, not in a period. This is a tutorial. So I'm just going to call it Tutorial. Uh, if you're following along in my class, you're going to want to make sure that your period is there. Um, it's always just a, the more information you have, the better. And then I have my location set to documents. So you can change that by clicking the little folder, navigating to where you want to save it. I want to save mine in the documents. So I'm going to hit select and accept. Now, ideally, when I open up my finder window and I go into my documents, I should see a folder that is called Brown Roger Serial Commercial Tutorial. I open that up and I have all of the folders as well as the workspace. So I am set that way. Now before I actually begin, I've just all I've done there is created the project. I need to now set the project. So to set the project, it's real simple. It's just file, set project. You navigate to that folder. Mine happens to be in the documents. I select the folder and hit set. And away we go. Now um, you always want to make sure that you're saving as you move along. I haven't even started right now. This is untitled. Um, but just to avoid having some troubles with names, I'm going to go ahead and save the file right now. File, save scene as. And I'm going to call this Serial Box because that's what I'm actually working on. Serial Box. And I'm going to call it Day 1. That way if I need to come back to it, I can call it Day 2, Day 3, Day 4. And I can, of course, subdivide Day 1. I could do one a, Day 1A, Day 1B, Day 1C. Um, that way, I always have a backup file to go to. But I'm just going to save this as Serial Box Day 1. I'm going to save it in the Scenes folder, hit Save As. Okay, so the first thing that I need to do is create the box that I'm actually going to be using. So I click on the Polygon. You can also go to Create Polygon Primitives Cube. Either way will work. And I'm going to adjust the size of my box. Okay. Um, you want to try to get as close to the size of a cereal box as you can. Obviously, we don't want it too big. We don't want it too small. We want it just right around there. And if you walk down the cereal aisle at your local grocery store and you look at cereal boxes, you're going to see they come in a variety of sizes and shapes. Even the same brands come in a variety of sizes and shapes. You have the family size and you have the giant size and you have the, the individual size. So we're not going to worry too much about this as long as it looks kind of like a cereal box. So I've got this and I'm going to come back to it in just a minute to prepare it. Um, but I need to open up my UV editor. My UV editor is what's going to allow me to unfold and create the map that I'm going to eventually put into Photoshop. So in your modeling toolkit, so under the modeling toolkit, up in the top there's a little icon that says UV. If I click on the UV editor, it's going to open up the window right here. It's the UV editor. It pulls it off on this window by its side. Just for the ease of use, I'm going to just drag it over here and drop it over into, uh, into my workspace. Now, uh, I, last time I guess I didn't pull off my UV toolkit. There's a lot of really cool stuff here in the UV toolkit. I'm not going to touch that today. Um, this would be something that you, you know, may want to look at uh, down the road for doing more advanced objects, especially if you're working with organic things like humans or quadrupeds or fantasy creatures. Uh, you're not going to want to follow this method for more advanced things. This is just an introduction into the world of UV mapping. Hopefully uh, give you a little insight into the process. Okay, so obviously as I pull up my object, it pulls up a UV map. Now it doesn't matter what shape you pull out in Maya. I could pull out a cone, I could pull out a cylinder, 
pull out a torus. Each one of these shapes all has their own UV map built right in. UV's maps are how, or UV coordinates rather, are how polygons display shaders. If there's not a UV set, then it doesn't matter what shader you have, whether you have a Lambert, a Fong, or, some, or a procedural, without a set of coordinates, you're not going to be able to see the, the shade show up. Um, but obviously this doesn't match this. So what we have to do is we have to prepare our box to try to match uh, the UV, or rather the, the other way around. So we need to get our UV map to match the box that we've created. So I'm going to prepare the box for UV mapping. To do that, the first thing I need to do is to freeze the transformations. And basically what freeze transformations does is it resets everything um, back to zeros and ones. So the translate rotate are set to zero and the scale is set to one. Um, in doing this, this allows the, the automatic mapping to look at the object as a solid piece rather than as the original modified thing. Uh, so it's just, a, it's just a quick step. If we don't do it, I'll show you what happens if we don't do it. If we don't freeze the transformations and we go to uh, the, under the UV editor, or I'm sorry, under the UV tool set, if we go to automatic, so UV automatic, if we don't freeze the transformations, all it does is cut those squares up. Obviously, that is not what we want for our map. We want our map to match our cereal box over here. So I'm just going to go back to object mode, right click and hold, go back to object mode. I'm going to go to modify and freeze transformations. Okay, that zeroes that out. Now with that zeroed out, I'm going to come over to UV and hit automatic. And now you can see that each one of these faces matches pretty close over here. And you can actually take this and make a UV snapshot or a Photoshop network and start coloring on it. It would work. You could actually do it with the other map as well. You, there's no re, you don't have to unfold um, and, and sew everything back together. However, the closer you get, the easier it's going to be to, to figure out. For instance, if I were to take this cube and I were to take it over to Photoshop and I would start coloring on it. Let's say this is the front. Great. Well, this is the front. Here it's a square. Here it's a rectangle. So if I were to color on the front here, when it came over here, it would be stretched out. In the same token, let's say this is the side. So if I color on the side and I put the nutritional facts in here, they're going to be squashed because they have to fit into that little area. So although we can take the, the existing UV maps, we want to make our workflow a little bit easier by trying to get the same pieces. Now in the same token where I could take this over to Photoshop, the reason I don't is I'm not sure which way's up, which way's down, which one's right, which one's left, which one's top, which one's bottom. Um, by sewing this back together, I'll be able to, to figure that out and my map will go much, much easier. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Um, to do that, I'm going to go into edge mode. Now, the way that I sew this, sew mine back together, um, there's no real rhyme or reason to it. You can do it in any order that you would like, um, but a couple things you want to, to try to avoid. You, you want to make sure that, that you're maximizing your space. Everything that we have has to fit inside of this quadrant one. So this entire box, all of these little pieces, when, when taped back together, has to fit into the quadrant one. Um, the smaller that we make it in quadrant one, the harder it's going to be when we bring it in, back into Maya, the, the less pixels we're going to be able to use. So the more efficiently we use this space, the better our image will turn out. Um, so I like to just start, so in edge mode, I like to start at the top and then work around clockwise and then finish just right here in the end. Like I said, you can do this in any order you like, but if you want a nice good map, start in the top, select the top edge, and you can do it either here in the perspective view or here in the UV editor. I prefer the perspective view. I hit the edge and I go to cut and sew and I hit move and sew and that's going to sew that edge back together. If you are, are using an older version of Maya, there's a good possibility that there will be a word right here that says polygons. So where mine says edit, yours would say polygons. And then you'd click polygons and then down towards the bottom it would say move and sew. But here with the, the uh, Maya 2017, I think I'm on update four, um, when you hit, you'll, you'll go to cut and sew and then hit move and sew. So I'm going to select the next 
edge and go to cut and sew, move and sew, or again, polygons, move and sew. I'm gonna go to that bottom edge, cut and sew, move and sew. I'm gonna go to that left edge, cut and sew, move and sew. And then lastly, I'm gonna go to this back right edge and do cut and sew, move and sew. Oh, I must have missed it, so let's try that one more time. Cut and sew, move and sew. Okay, so now I have a decent map. Um, if I keep sewing, so if I keep sewing it together, what I'm going to end up with is a two-dimensional representation of a three-dimensional object, but it's all going to be on top of each other. And we don't want that. We don't want the, we don't want to try to put this back into 3D. We want to try to sew as much of it together as we can uh, without actually putting it back together. So, uh, so this is actually the, the best shape. Think about a dice unfolded, or again, look at the default UV map look at how this is kind of put together. If I started sewing this edge and this edge and this edge, we'd start making a 3D shape again. We don't want that. So we've got the shape where we want it. The last step that I have to do before I start sending this over to Photoshop is I need to get everything to fit in quadrant one here. Um, if it's outside of quadrant one, if it's over here in, in two, three, four, it's going to cut off when I take it over to Photoshop. So to, I need to move this, make sure it fits inside quadrant one. I'm just going to right click and hold, go into UV mode. I could also probably do this in edge or face mode, um, but I'm just going to move it, put it in place, get it in there the best that I can. If you have to, you may have to use the scale tool. If it's a little bit too big, you can use the scale tool to make it a little bit smaller. Um, or if it's a little bit small, you want to try to, uh, again, maximize that space so you have more pixels to work with. So once I've got this ready to go, I'm ready to send it over to Photoshop. So I'm going to right click and hold and go back to object mode. This is very important. If you're not in object mode, you won't be able to select the attributes to send over to Photoshop. Now I could potentially just take a UV snapshot at this point. And a UV snapshot, there's nothing wrong with using a UV snapshot. Um, UV snapshot might actually be a little bit more universal. But all, uni all a UV snapshot does is it takes a picture of our map right here and then you would color on that that picture. Um, the beauty of a Photoshop network is that you can select different nodes. We're going to select the color node. Uh, later on we may address the, you know, doing a bump, uh, perhaps some transparency, and a couple of other of those things to, to show you how using Photoshop you can adjust um, you know, individual nodes on the shaders. Um, for now we're just going to use color just as kind of a base level to try this out. Um, uh, but Photoshop has much more vers uh, versatility than a UV snapshot, and it gives you a lot more to work with. So to send this over to Photoshop, we go to Image, and we hit Create PSD Network. And what that does is that opens up a Create PSD Network option. And mine's pretty much where it needs to be. There are two problems uh, that I want to address with, uh, that I like to address with students right here at this point. The first problem is a lot of times students don't get out of edge mode, UV mode, or face mode, and so when they open up this window, there are no attributes to send over to the selected attributes. Some, without a doubt, somebody's going to raise their hand, come over and say, I don't have any attributes. This is a super easy fix. You right click and hold, go to object mode, select the object, and then it'll populate. Now this is the second problem. If you look in my attributes right now, this material is shaded with a Lambert 1. If I change any at attribute of Lambert 1, every other shape that I pull out will have whatever I've done to it as its shader. So in other words, if I bring this over to color, I design my box, I bring it back into Maya, if I open up a sphere, it's going to have my cereal box texture on it. If I open up a cone, it's going to have my cereal box texture on it. We don't want to do that. So I need to change the material from Lambert 1. The easiest way to change the shader you don't have to open up the hypershade hierarchy. The hypershade can help to adjust a few things. I'm going to do it the, the real quick way by right clicking and holding and coming down to where it says assign a new material. I let go of assign a new material and it's going to give me a list of materials to use. I want my cereal box to be flat, to be a matte um, shaded. So I'm going to use Lambert. If you wanted a little bit of shine, I would recommend using an anastrophic. That's going to give it a little bit of gloss. But for what we're doing, I want it to be Lambert. So I'm going to go ahead and click Lambert. And you notice that now this has changed from Lambert 1 to Lambert 2. I'm going to double click color and it's going to bring over the color attribute. Later on, I'll show you incandescence or bump. Well, maybe not incandescence, but transparency or bump. Um, but for right now, we're just going to do color. If I look at the image name, 
it's going to automatically give me a name based on the file, the scene name, and then whatever the shape is called. You can go ahead and change this. Like if you wanted to call this cereal box design, that would be fine. I'm going to leave mine as default. I always do. It seems to help me later on when I'm trying to go through several Photoshop networks. Um, if I don't have consistent names, it becomes a problem for me. So I'm just going to leave that as default. I'm going to hit open Adobe Photoshop. I'm going to make sure that's checked. And then where it says size 2048 by 2048, I'm going to jump that up. So that gives me essentially a 2K image if you want to call it that. I'm going to leave the UV settings alone here. Again, make sure that color is over on my selected attributes. And I'm going to hit create. What that should do is that should open up Photoshop and allow me to start editing in, on my uh, Photoshop network. So the next tutorial that we'll do, we'll just do a real quick overview of Photoshop and then bringing that file back here into Maya. But right now, that's a quick way to get your box over to a Photoshop network. Thanks.